Anime, Reign of the Seven Spellblades. Continuing to Episode 6, Oliver once again emphasizes to Nanao not to fall under the curse of Vera's eye. Oliver initiates the attack using his Tonitrus, which Vera counters with the same incantation. From that single incantation alone, Oliver can already perceive the significant disparity in their abilities. Next, it's Nanao's turn to strike with her sword. Vera acknowledges Nanao's exceptional swordsmanship skills. No wonder she was able to defeat the Garuda. However, Nanao still doesn't pay enough attention to her surroundings. Vera recites an earth mantra to trip Nanao. Just before Vera is about to attack her, Oliver intervenes with a flama. Now Vera comprehends that Oliver is the one compensating for Nanao's weaknesses. Deep inside, Oliver can't believe that Vera can confront Nanao's swordsmanship prowess without being overwhelmed. Subsequently, Oliver launches another attack. He chants a Clippia spell, creating an earthen wall right in front of Vera. Then, he employs impetus to topple the wall towards Vera. The combination of incantations crafted by Oliver surprises him. Nevertheless, Vera still manages to evade the recent assault. Without delay, Nanao attempts another strike against Vera. As the duel continues, Vera senses that she would be troubled in a serious sword fight against Nanao. Hence, Vera opts to rely more on her spells. She intones the Tonitrus incantation, with its wide-reaching lightning range. Obliged to do so, Oliver and Nanao take cover to avoid being hit by the lightning. Oliver notices a cluster of bottles near Vera. He then employs for Gore to shatter those bottles towards Vera. Thanks to this, Vera's attack comes to a halt. Suddenly, Nanao approaches Vera from behind to attack. Unfortunately, she stumbles due to stepping on the floor that Vera had weakened. Without hesitation, Vera chants Flama into the hole where Nanao is situated. Nonetheless, Nanao manages to escape the blaze and charges towards Vera. With agility, Vera distances herself while chanting impetus. Unexpectedly, somehow, she manages to deflect the wind attacking Nanao aside. Oliver, who witnesses this, is equally surprised, just as Vera is. In fact, Oliver even believes that Nanao herself might not be aware of how she did it. Nanao had just detected the incantation through her katana and deflected it to the side. Perhaps she considers the katana an extension of her own body. Vera wants to see once more what Nanao is capable of. Subsequently, Vera recites a massive flama spell toward Nanao. Simultaneously with Oliver, Nanao combines her flama incantation as well to withstand Vera's attack. Observing this, Vera feels genuinely amused. In reality, she only regards the two of them as an added bonus from capturing Katie. After discussing their plan, Oliver and Nanao continue their assault. Previously, Oliver had enchanted a table with an elastic spell. Nanao then uses the table as a springboard. Meanwhile, Oliver will attack successively to divert Vera's attention. By now, Nanao has positioned herself behind Vera, rendering her immune to the curse of Vera's eye. However, Oliver senses something amiss as Vera moves her left hand. As it turns out, on her left hand, there is yet another cursed eye. Nanao believes she won't have enough time. The curse from that eye is surely as fast as the speed of light. Yet, Nanao believes she just needs to preempt that speed. Defying the atmosphere stretched out before her and the flowing time itself, she is determined to challenge the speed of light. Unbeknownst to anyone, suddenly Vera's left hand has been severed. She doesn't comprehend what just transpired. As Oliver approaches Nanao, it seems that Nanao doesn't fully grasp what she has just done. She has just struck Vera, disregarding the concepts of space and time. Speed itself holds no meaning in the face of Nanao's recent attack. Her technique renders her opponent unable to retaliate. In other words, a spellblade technique. What's more, her technique differs from the six spellblades that have already been discovered. This is the seventh spellblade, unknown to anyone. Afterward, they attempt to heal the unconscious Vera. For now, they need to take Katie to the academy first. Suddenly, Nanao remembers something. She still wants her reward in the form of a kiss. Shortly after, the student council president, Alvin, and Carlos arrive at the scene. They say they received an anonymous tip. They are both surprised that Oliver and Nanao managed to defeat Vera. Nevertheless, the one suffering the most here is Katie, who feels betrayed by her own seniors. Once Katie regains consciousness in the infirmary, 
Oliver and Nanao explain everything to her. Even so, Oliver is convinced that Vera genuinely wants to help Katie. Unfortunately, Katie shows Vera unexpected results. The troll is now able to speak due to the communication done by Katie. Worried, Katie asks about the troll's fate. So far, the troll is the only successful result from the research to grant intelligence. Most likely, the troll won't be executed. Katie feels content with this happy ending. Suddenly, she wakes up from her slumber to kiss Oliver on the cheek. She does the same to Nanao. She expresses her gratitude to both of them. And unexpectedly, Katie laughs about the events that have transpired. She doesn't want to dwell on all of this in a gloomy manner. After this, Katie intends to confront Vera and slap her. She wants to convey everything she needs to say, and only after that consider their relationship. After all, this academy is filled with individuals like Vera. Katie feels she needs to become accustomed to it all. Once she does, she plans to influence other students with her personality. Suddenly, Oliver sheds tears. Katie becomes concerned if her words were too foolish and made Oliver cry. However, the reason he's crying is because he's deeply moved by having successfully protected something. After school hours ended, Oliver and his friends walk down the corridor. Somehow, Mr. Darius appeared to be blocking their way. As he approached, Darius said he wanted to talk to Oliver about something. Following the request, Oliver went to meet with Darius. They walked through a labyrinth to reach a certain place. During the journey, Mr. Darius was able to defeat a monster stronger than the Garuda without using any incantations. Afterward, they arrived at what seemed to be a ritual site. As Mr. Darius suspected, there was a still open magical gate there. He proceeded to close the gate. Then, out of the blue, Oliver asked if Darius was already aware of the troll's condition. At that time, Darius seemed very eager to execute the troll. However, he wasn't responsible for magical creatures. Oliver suspected that Darius wanted to eliminate evidence. Oliver investigated and found out that Darius was the one supplying half-human creatures to Vera. Nevertheless, Oliver still didn't understand why Darius supported Vera's research. Darius answered that he wanted to eradicate the foolishness of the human species. Since ancient times, humans have always been composed of 10% intelligent individuals and 90% fools. In order to eliminate this, Darius wanted to add something to the human intellect. In other words, he aimed to grant the same intelligence to half-humans as well. Then, Darius offered Oliver to assist him. Darius regarded Oliver as a student lacking special talents, a type of magician who would not succeed. According to Darius, someone who can excel at everything, like Oliver, is well suited to be an assistant. Furthermore, Oliver wanted to ask one more thing. He wanted to know what Darius did on the night of April 8, 1525, according to the Grand Calendar. Darius understood what Oliver meant, realizing he had been targeted by Oliver from the beginning. Darius concluded that Oliver is related to that woman. Oliver felt grateful. He was thankful that Darius, whom he deeply despised, hadn't changed since seven years ago. In this manner, the two of them engaged in a battle. Somehow, Oliver could see various possible futures of their fight. In his vision, he always lost to Darius. Yet, there was still one possibility that could lead to Oliver's victory. He just needed to find the threat of the future. Then, in a single move, Oliver managed to strike Darius fatally. This is Oliver's ability, the fourth spellblade, the thread that traverses hell, Angustavia. Darius was taken aback by this. The fourth spellblade should have disappeared along with the life of that woman seven years ago. It turns out, that woman was Oliver's mother. And her spellblade has been passed down to Oliver. Still unsatisfied, Oliver wanted to torture Darius just like how he tortured his mother with 128 types of pain. Oliver demanded that Darius find the words that would make him forgive Darius. Various phrases were spoken, but Oliver still couldn't forgive him and continued torturing him. Eventually, Darius couldn't bear it anymore and said he wanted to be killed. Hearing this, Oliver seemed satisfied and finally forgave him. He ended Darius's life by slitting his throat. Suddenly, a man's voice called out to Oliver by the name Noel. The man was Gwyn, Oliver's cousin, and he was accompanied by Shannon. When Shannon tried to approach Oliver, he stopped her from getting closer. 
He didn't want Shannon to be tainted by Darius's impure blood. Gwyn inquired about the burden on Oliver's body. He mentioned that Oliver could do it twice as usual. After that, he should prepare to die. Because of that, Gwyn prohibited Oliver from using it a third time. All of their plans would end if Oliver died. Suddenly, a little girl appeared by Oliver's side. It was Teresa. This was the first time she appeared directly in front of Oliver. As Oliver suspected, Teresa was the one who reported Vera's incident to the student council. Shortly after, Gwyn called his companions to gather at the location. Many students in robes knelt before Oliver. Gwyn asked Oliver to wear a mask. He stated that tonight was Oliver's coronation day. They planned to kill all the traitors and those who plotted against Oliver's mother. He still remembered who those people were. Vanessa Aldis, Francis Gilchrist, Enrico Frigieri, Demetrio Aristides, Baldia Muwazikamili, and lastly, a junior of Oliver's mother who pretended to take her to safety. However, that junior secretly stabbed Oliver's mother from behind. That junior is the current headmistress Kimberly, Esmeralda. Only six remain. Oliver will hunt them all down without exception. This is the end of episode 6. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss part 7 of this series recap.